So this video is about melanin. We're going to talk about some fundamental things and some not so fundamental things in regards to our diet and how melanin is made in our skin. So this video is for anyone. If you can tan, if you can absorb the sun, this video is for you. It's applicable to you. Now, why is melanin important? Why am I focusing on it? Why am I talking about it? Well, with melanin, you know, a lot of people like to just think of it as like, uh, it, you know, being superficial and just skin protection. And they don't think anything past that point. But I feel that it goes way past that. It goes to doing other things and even other world, otherworldly things. So uh, it's important to me, and I think that it it serves a good purpose to focus on it and talk about it and, and learn about it and unlock all the secrets of it. You know, I'm talking about diet. Diet is um, it's really a small thing, but it's still an important thing. You know, we we eat every day, so you know it's important to take into consideration these things. You know, when you when you're choosing your diet, I know if, if you're like me, you're always wondering like what's what's the best thing. You know, how, what can what can I, what can help me? What is not helping me? And you know, you kind of want to know you know about these things, and a lot of it is a big mystery. And I admit myself, a lot of it I don't know as well as I think I do. You know, a lot of it is trial and error. You know, what works at one point in your life it may not work in another point in your life. So I'm constantly um, just learning and evolving and, and trying to learn about this type of thing, you know, in regards to, you know, just anything uh, with life, you know, which is a lot of mysteries. So with, uh, with melanin, let's start with um, what melanin is. Let's just give a basic rundown and, you know, we'll go where we go <laughs> with this. Now, there's three types of melanin is what they say. You know, there's um, eumelanin, eumelanin, fomelanin, and neuromelanin. Now, fomelanin, they say that it it's the melanin is the color in uh, the lighter parts of our body. Or if you have lighter skin, it's the dominant melanin in your skin. And uh, when I say lighter parts of the body, I'm talking about the lips, I'm talking about the genitals, uh, places that are typically lighter on our bodies. Uh, Fomelanin, and then there's eumelanin. Eumelanin is associated with um, really, really dark skin, like like my own. And uh, there's also uh, neuromelanin. Neuromelanin deserves a, a video or two or three uh, devoted all to itself. And uh, neuromelanin is the melanin in our brains and melanin throughout our nervous system and our bodies. Now. Melanin, uh, I mentioned earlier that melanin is more than just superficial uh, outside protection, uh, DNA protection. They say it protects our DNA from the sun. But uh, I like to believe that melanin takes the sun and turns it into different forms of energy. And not even just the sun. Melanin can deal with many different types of radiation. Now, I'm talking... Uh, I'm talking X-ray radiation, gamma rays, uh, all of this stuff. Melanin has the capability to absorb and take in these different radiations and transform them into usable forms for the biological system that they protect. So, you know, I, once once I realized and understood that, I realized that um that melanin isn't just you know it isn't just something that covers us and gives us a certain look. You know, it's, it's deeper than that. And uh, I see it more as some type of profound technology. And, you know, we need to understand and break down and, and learn about these technologies. It'll just make us better. And uh, I feel that melanin, like I made a, a video, a few videos back about uh, the skin being the first brain. And uh, melanin is one of the main components of the skin. And, uh, you know, it just makes a lot of sense once you just really think into it. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, this video is going to be about um, our diets and uh, the, the dietary things that we can do to 
have a favorable influence on melanin. Uh, some of the things that I'm going to talk about are really fundamental. And uh, some of the things that I'm going to talk about are just some things that I've learned through trial and error and some things that I, that I know about. And uh, feel free if you uh, know something that's um, related or something or you have something to add. You know, I'm making this video in, in hopes to, um, to educate, but also to, to get back, um, you know, a collaboration, so to speak. And um, yeah, so how about we talk about melanin? I'm going to start by talking about how melanin is made, because I think we need to know that part first in order to understand the dietary things that are, are important in how in us making melanin. So how about we go into the video? Here's a really basic breakdown of how melanin is made under the skin. It all starts with the sun, particularly UV light, which goes through the keratinocyte of the skin and reaches our DNA. The DNA doesn't want to be damaged. You don't want that damaged. So it releases palm C. Palm C converts to melanin-stimulating hormone, which triggers the melanocytes to start creating melanin. So what are some key things needed for melanin to be produced in the melanocyte? Well, as you can see here, melanin biosynthesis, tyrosine kinase. Tyrosine kinase coded by a TYR gene is the primary enzyme involved in the conversion of tyrosine to melanin, although other proteins are involved. TYR is a copper containing oxygenase and is rate limiting for melanin synthesis. So here it talks about tyrosine kinase. Tyrosine kinase is an enzyme, which is an enzyme that contains copper. So copper is essential for melanin production and here it says uh, tyrosine kinase uh, tyrosine is broken down by this tyrosine kinase tyrosine is a, an amino acid so tyrosine is the main amino acid needed for melanin synthesis now tyrosine can be made from another amino acid called phenylalanine I may be messing that up, but if you have a problem digesting or converting phenylalanine, then you may want to supplement tyrosine so that you don't have to convert phenylalanine to tyrosine. So tyrosine. So if you don't want to go the supplement route, maybe you could consider cheese. The amino acid tyrosine was first discovered in large amounts in cheese. They called it the cheese amino acid. And I myself, I have a pretty big appetite for cheese. And perhaps that's a, a natural sign. I just feel good eating this and eating it regularly. So we talked about tyrosine kinase being the most important amino acid responsible for melanin production. Now, tyrosine is converted by an enzyme called tyrosine kinase. And tyrosine kinase is composed of copper. So that makes copper essential too in the production of melanin. And here we have a very copper rich food chocolate and you know overall just a pretty healthy food chocolate considering if it's not loaded with sugar and uh, with chocolate you know you want to go as natural as you can if you can get your hands on some uh, some fresh cacao beans perfect but uh, if you can't get that maybe some powder if you can't get that then you know some low sugar candy would do the trick but uh, with chocolate, you know, you want to eat it in an area where it could exist because chocolate grows in very, very sunny places. So you want to eat this in the when it's pretty hot outside, when the sun's strong or if you live in the 
if you live in the tropics, you know, chocolate would be a good choice then. You know, no mismatches. So, chocolate, copper. Here's another copper rich food. This is chaga mushroom. Now, I talked about chocolate being grown in really, really strong sun places, but here, chaga, it grows, it's a mushroom. It grows on trees in very, very cold places. So this would be pretty good for, you know, if you live in a cold place, This is, you can make chaga tea. And uh, chaga is considered a superfood. You know, look it up if you, if you get a chance, if you don't know about chaga. And uh, chaga is a very high in copper food and it is very high in melanin itself. So chaga. Here's one that you probably didn't expect. Nicotine. Nicotine has a pretty bad reputation because it is tied to smoking. And smoking has caused lots of deaths and lots of uh, health problems. However, nicotine isn't nearly as bad as it's made out to be. Nicotine is more like a vitamin or a nutrient. It's anti-inflammatory. It's neuroprotective. It protects your brain and your, your nervous system. Now, the problem with nicotine, you know, smoking. Smoking is the main thing. You know, with smoke, it deprives you of oxygen. You know, that's not a good thing. And also with um, smoking cigarettes and there's different ways you, you smoke and get the um, nicotine artificially, you know, it it damages your circulatory system. You know, and when your circulatory system gets damaged, you know, your body sends cholesterol to clean that up, to fix that up. And then, you know, people think that cholesterol is a problem, but, you know, it's not the root problem. Cholesterol is there to fix it up. You know, you want to get rid of the root problem, which is, you know, smoking and putting the chemicals in your body. Now, if you're going to smoke and, you know, that's your prerogative, be smart about it. Take it outdoors under strong sunlight because then you're able to negate a lot of the negative effects of, of smoking and uh, nicotine what's good about it is that it accumulates in areas that are highly concentrated in melanin and nicotine boosts the production of melanin now I've, I've had some uh, pretty some close friends of mine that are um, very very fair complexion that I've seen tan really really fast with uh, nicotine yeah, particularly nicotine gum which is what I do from time to time you know when the time is right when there's strong strong sunlight there's no strong sunlight I don't really mess with it and I you know it's, I do it on and off because nicotine is a very it, it can be really addictive especially if you do it in a drug-like way, such as cigarettes or, or the gum. You know, in that case, you know, now I'm talking about the gum. In that case with the gum, you know, you want to, um, you know, really pay attention and not overdo anything and, um, you know, do it with meals. Don't, don't overdo it because, you know, if you overdo it, nicotine can become a poison. But, you know, if none of these are options for you, and I suggest it not being an option, you know, there's always the natural route, which is food. Nicotine is in food too. Surprise. However, it's not in as high of concentration as you would find in a cigarette or gum or some other artificial source of nicotine. The highest concentration of nicotine in food that I've found is it's in the eggplant. And I think the potato is um, right behind the eggplant. But if you take a look here, here's a plate of different vegetables that contain 
nicotine. So earlier I talked about a few foods that are pretty high in copper. They were actually some of my favorite things to eat and drink. But if you can't stomach those things or they're not to your taste, your liking, something simple that you could do is you can get you a pure copper pot or a pot that's almost completely copper and fill it with water and leave it, let's say, overnight or a couple of days or however long. What happens is that the water leaches the copper from the container and it, the ions, the copper ions are, are in the water and you're able to get copper. You can drink the copper that way. You can, you can get copper into your body that way. And uh, this is another thing, you know, you don't want to do too much because, you know, it can become poisonous. You know, you want to do it maybe once a day. You want to go crazy with this. But um, copper uh, does other things, too. Copper, it's uh, antimicrobial. And uh, some people use copper pots and uh, and copper to purify water because um, the ions kill the um, the the microbes or the, um, the the bad organisms that are in water. They use it to clean water. And uh, with copper, again, you want it you want it as pure as you can get it. And uh, I don't have a copper pot, but I do have copper strips that I bought, and they are 99% copper. Here's how I prepare my copper in my water. And uh, I basically cook cook my copper strips overnight at on a very low heated setting and again you don't want to overdo it with the copper you know maybe once a day or every other day because you know too much that you can't have too much of a good thing So I'm going to finish the video off by talking about not being afraid of the sun. You know, whether you have, uh, you're, you're aging and you want to really take care of your skin. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure everyone wants to um, stay, stay pretty for as long as they can. And uh, they figure if they have to avoid the sun, they, they just, it's just something that um, comes with time and that happens naturally in life. But uh, my my thinking, my philosophy on all of that is that uh, the sun is never bad. The sun is primordial. You know, it was here first. So if the sun if the sun starts becoming a problem, there's something else in your life that probably needs to be fixed first. And uh, one of the things that um, is right under our noses, and a lot of us know, but we don't want to face it. Is that um, you know the way we live our lives and our environments affect how we deal with the sun, and it makes the sun turn it turns the sun into an enemy for us. And uh, one of the, the main things that I'm talking about here is um, our electromagnetic environments. Uh, our electromagnetic environments, it um, you know, life is all about energy fields. We're in all types of energy fields. You know, right now I'm I'm in an energy field. I'm uh I'm catching this uh early sunrise, and um to me this is one of the healthiest in energy fields that I can be in, and also you're in um the Earth's magnetic energy field, and you know the sun the sun's energy field, uh it's it's more like a a masculine uh, energy. It, it charges us, it gets us going, and the Earth's magnetic field, the magnetic energy field, which um. A lot of us we we lack in this day and age because of the environments that we we spend most of our time in. Like um, when we go to sleep, we're disconnected from the Earth, and we we lose out on a lot of um, the Earth's uh, magnetism, the Earth's magnetic energy field. Magnetism is is a really special form of energy. It's a really important energy. It's just as important as 
the masculine energy that we get from the sun and the air that we breathe. And uh, we're pretty disconnected from the, um, the magnetism of the earth and also the electromagnetic environments that we that we um, we've isolated and surrounded ourselves in. I'm talking about our homes. Uh, it it um, has a, a major effect on how we deal how we deal with the sun. It turns the sun in, into an enemy. And uh, you know you know dietary things are you know just a, a small thing that can be done in order to combat and um, and go against um, these these things these these holes that we've um, dug for ourselves. So you know I want to end on that and um, you know I. You know, I talk about, um, you know, there's other factors. You know, there's, I talk about water sometimes. Um, magnetism is a really, really important one. I would love to delve into talking about magnetism and understanding how magnetism works. Of course, you know, I talk about the sun, but, you know, the earth. The earth is, um, you know, just a, a huge magnet. It's, um, it's a maternal energy. It takes care of us. It's kind of like... Um, the mother and us being in the womb of the mother and uh, I think it warrants a lot more um, learning and um, finding out about so um, I'll end the video there and uh, I'll delve into more um, videos about melanin in the future you know I would love to um, learn about neuromelanin and just dig into it and uh, just take a deep dive on that and um, talk about it and see what I come up with you know we'll, we'll see what happens but uh, thank you so much for watching my video. I appreciate you. I love you. And I hope, I hope and expect to see you in the comments section. And uh, thank you. Please like, share, subscribe, and browse my channel. Y'all stay beautiful out there. I'm gone. I love you.